What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to the pilot episode of Matt's Mishmash Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew John Beneke. Now, the odds are, if you're watching or listening to this, you probably know me personally, but that might not be the case down the road, and so I wanted to take the opportunity with this first episode just to introduce myself and give you an idea of who I am and what I'm all about. So, this podcast is a passion project that's been bouncing around in the back of my mind for quite some time. A few years back, I had the opportunity to be featured on a pair of podcasts. Shout out to Shantae over at CTA Marketing and the Call to Action podcast, and to Aggie, Lorenzo, and Mariano for having me on at the Rockstar podcast. I realized after these experiences that this was something I might want to do at some point in connection with my writing. Now, writers are stereotypically introverted, but as some of you probably already know, I'm anything but. I enjoy public speaking and engaging with people, so a podcast felt like a natural step in the evolution of my writing career. Part of what kept this particular project on the back burner for so long, though, was not being able to narrow down to a specific topic to cover. I have a ton of interests, and it just felt impossible to choose only one, and that actually became my aha moment. Instead of having only one focus, I should just cover them all. And so that's where the title was born. If you've never heard the term before, a mishmash is a confused mixture, a bunch of random odds and ends thrown together. I mean, if that doesn't describe me to a T, then I don't know what does. So I'm all over the place with my interests, but I think that's what enables me to relate to and interact with such a broad range of people. I try to know as much as I can about, well, as much as I can, and it makes having conversations that much easier. And so through this podcast, I'm hoping to paint a clearer picture of myself and to explore the things that I enjoy doing. So one of my first creative outlets was photography. When I was a kid, my uncle got me this awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles camera that would add a little turtle image to your pictures when you got the film developed. By the time I got to high school, I was carrying around a disposable camera with me wherever I went, and then in college, I finally upgraded to a digital camera. Eventually, I took the dive into SLRs, and I never looked back. I realized, though, that I needed to learn photo editing, and so that sent me down a completely different rabbit hole, and it also set the tone for a lot of what was to come. See, even at that point, I was someone who would rather figure out how to do it myself rather than outsource it, and so I picked up Photoshop Elements, a couple of books, and I got to it. Photography is still just a hobby, but it's one that's become increasingly linked to my writing. So much of being an independent author revolves around marketing, and so being able to produce visual accompaniments has enabled me to develop my personal brand. I actually designed the logo for this podcast, for example, and you can see the majority of my interests are included in it. You've got the SLR camera, the video game controller, the sports equipment from my playing days, and the whistle for my coaching ones. There are a pair of guitars as my primary musical instruments, and then the dad mug for parenting which I'll cover in greater detail later on. There's also an awesome present from my girls' basketball team that I last coached in 2019, my coach Matt Mugg, filled, of course, with everyone's favorite ubiquitous Irish stout. Guinness actually plays a role in a few different ways, funny enough, especially the writing aspect. Now, I apologize to anyone who's heard me cover this in previous interviews, but writing has been my life's passion since I was seven years old. I had a poem published in a local newspaper, and after seeing my work in print, well, the rest was history. My mom was and continues to be a huge Stephen King fan, and my dad is a big reader as well, so I was raised in an environment where I was constantly exposed to literature and music. Now, this is where I might begin to jump into some new information about my background. See, growing up, I excelled in school. From first grade onward, I was in honors classes, and I wound up graduating as the elementary school valedictorian. I finished fourth in junior high and 15th out of nearly 700 kids in high school, so my academic track record meant that people had pretty high expectations for me. The problem, though, was that I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was terrified of the prospect of adulthood, largely because I was afraid of making the wrong choice. See, at 17, I assumed that you chose a career and you stuck with it forever. I was jealous of my friends who either had clear fields of study that they wanted to go into, or the ones who knew that college wasn't in their futures. See, even if they were stigmatized for going after so-called blue-collar careers, I was envious of them because they at least knew what they were doing. I was sick and tired of being told that I was going to change the world or that I was going to do big things because I had zero idea of how I would or what those things would be. I told my parents at first that I wanted to be a writer, and they suggested that I go into finance first. It was sound advice because there was uncertainty involved with writing, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to enter the business world. I suggested teaching English as the next best thing, but again, that was something they thought I could do after a white-collar career, where I'd be able to save up money and provide for a possible family down the road. I've covered this part pretty extensively, so I'll just sum it up quickly here. 
I went to Baruch College to study finance. I met my wife, Heather, on our first day of classes. I got an internship a few years later that would have paid the way to a lucrative career, except that I realized it wasn't the type of work I wanted to do. I wound up getting a job instead in the education field at Baruch, and then I enrolled in a master's program at Brooklyn College, where I graduated with my degree a few years later in adolescent English education. I was all set to begin my career as a teacher, and that's when Guinness entered the picture. See, to celebrate the completion of my program, Heather and I had planned a trip to Ireland. Growing up in a predominantly Irish neighborhood and having a strong connection with my Irish heritage, this was a no-brainer way to celebrate. And so literally the day after I graduated, we flew to Dublin for the trip of a lifetime. We hit the requisite pubs while we were there, and I noticed early on that Heather didn't seem to be drinking quite as much as I expected her to. Now, I didn't care because it meant more for me, but on our last night there, when I finished two full pints before she even dented her first one, I kind of had a funny feeling that something was up. And sure enough, the day after we returned, she took a pregnancy test, and we found out that we were going to be parents. Of course, we were both freaking out because she just had all that stuff to drink, and so that was the first thing that we brought up with the doctor when we went for that initial sonogram. He asked what she drank, and when she said Guinness, he just chuckled and said not to worry. Best thing she could have been having. They used to prescribe it as medicine back in the day, he said. And so, concurrent with this new development in our personal lives, I found out upon returning that then-Mayor Bloomberg had enacted a hiring freeze for all new teachers. Because I wasn't officially in the system, none of the schools that were interested in me could bring me on board. And so, fast forward to January of 2010, and I realized we had a huge decision to make. The baby was coming, and that hiring freeze wasn't going anywhere. And so we decided that I would stay home with Timmy because it would be a lot easier for me to re-enter the classroom at some indeterminate point in the future than it would be for Heather to rejoin the corporate workforce. Plus, it would give me the opportunity to focus more on writing. Funny how things wind up working out sometimes, huh? So even though we went to Baruch, Heather and I were also a part of the Macaulay Honors College, a program that began as the CUNY Honors College back in 2001. We were members of its inaugural class, and we were the first couple from the program to start a family together. Knowing about my writing interests and wanting to help to support them, the Honors College reached out about documenting some of these first steps, beginning with Heather's eventual return to the office a few months after Timmy was born. I give her a lot of credit, because aside from it already being difficult enough to deal with leaving the baby after a few months together, she now had a camera crew waiting for her outside, ready to record her first trip back into the city. They were then coming back to the apartment to document my first day alone with Tim. Now, concurrent with that project was a blog that we decided that I would start to keep tabs on those early days. It was supposed to follow my adventures in parenting as a so-called stay-at-home scholar, and they would help to promote it. After a few entries, though, I realized that I was really uncomfortable with the idea of writing about something that I was only just beginning to learn about. I didn't feel qualified to be offering up any sort of meaningful advice, and providing anecdotes just felt a little too personal for me to be sharing at that time. And so I shifted away from that topic, and the blog became more of an outlet for whatever topics I was interested in writing about. Fast forward to 2022, and while still no expert by any means, I finally have enough experience and have accrued enough observations to feel like I can finally speak on the topic of parenting. And so, in a way, this podcast is the fulfillment of that promise I made back in 2010, albeit in a different medium. Parenting is a relevant topic for a lot of people, and it's certainly a source of subject matter for this podcast. Plus, with Tim becoming a teenager next year, my daughter turning 10 this year, and my little guy, well, not being quite so little anymore, I feel like it's a great time to look both backwards and forwards along this parenting continuum. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm the very lucky father of three awesome young people. Tim is your prototypical firstborn, independent, confident, and always looking out for his younger siblings. Sarah, despite being a middle child, is also the only girl, and she is an absolute lover of life. And Jack? He's just a joyous ball of energy. I'm extremely fortunate that all three of them share in my many interests, music and sports especially. I never intended for them to fall in love with basketball, but when they did, I was overjoyed. I'll talk more about my experiences with coaching in a future episode, but suffice to say, I never anticipated enjoying the role of coach more than I would actually playing the sport. And this is coming from a guy who from 1997 to 2001 would play anywhere from 35 to 50 hours a week of basketball, every week, rain, snow, or shine. As great as coaching is though, my current role as a fan is selfishly my favorite. Nothing beats getting to go and just watch them do what they love. All three of them want to become professional basketball players, though Sarah also wants to be a gym teacher first and foremost. So shout out to Miss V at Sycamore for igniting the fire of that dream. So right now, our primary focus is on leading them along that path. Now, I mentioned earlier that Guinness played a role in several things, and with St. Patrick's Day approaching, I figured I could share this lovely memory that partially explains how I became so extroverted. 
Back in 2001, St. Patrick's Day was on a Saturday, and the weather was really nice. I know this because I distinctly remember being at the park in the early afternoon that day. A group of kids showed up to play, and it became clear pretty quickly that they were coming back from the parade in the city. I could smell the beer and the whiskey on their breath, and so I figured I was going to run circles around them. I increased the effort level, and at one point, I went to box out the best player on the court. As soon as the ball left the rim, I rocketed skyward, grabbed the ball out of the air, and landed, knowing immediately that something was wrong. The first clue was that everyone had stopped moving. It was like we were playing a huge game of freeze tag or red light, green light. Little squid game reference there for you. Now, no one moved, and everyone was staring right at me. The second thing that I noticed was that the breeze felt different, stronger somehow. I looked down, and that was when I realized what had happened. Now, if you're a guy, the odds are you've been pantsed at one point or another. It's stupid, it's juvenile, but it's also hilarious. The sight of someone standing in their underwear with their pants around their ankles unexpectedly is a spectacle that usually is accompanied by embarrassed anger. This was no ordinary pantsing, though, not by a long shot. You see, what I didn't realize before I left the earth to go grab that rebound was that my friend Billy had grabbed onto the waistband of my shorts. Remember that extra effort that I mentioned? Yeah. You see, he held on tight, and I jumped clear out of both my basketball shorts and my boxers. And so I was standing there with ball in hand, looking at his shocked face as he held onto my clothes in disbelief. Thankfully, I had the wherewithal to snatch them out of his hands before it could really register what had happened. I credit the Guinness and the Jameson for slowing him down just enough, and I had them back on faster than I've ever gotten dressed in my life. 21 years later, and I still shudder at the thought of what would have happened if I hadn't gotten them back. For one, he was twice as fast as me, so if he had just decided to take off, I would have been screwed. I mean, that would have been really, really bad. Talk about a walk of shame. So there's the visual you didn't ask for and probably never wanted. Suffice to say, it's experiences like that that helped to toughen me up and made it harder for me to be embarrassed. And so, on that wonderful note, I'll draw this episode to a close. In future episodes, I'll be covering a multitude of topics, diving occasionally into parenting, music, sports, and of course, writing. In episode 2, I won't be flying solo, as I'll be bringing on my first guest as a co-pilot. I'll be exploring who controls the radio in the car, sharing my love of music with my kids, and how that can manifest in awesome ways. My guest will be a former basketball player of mine, and hands down, the most passionate music fan that I know, a young man with a bright future ahead of him in the industry. So join me and my guest Lucas O'Connor as we talk music and go over our Sirius XM Turbo Band Brackets and our own brand of March Madness. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day wherever and whenever you are.